Hi there, I wanted to show you three new instruments I bought from a company called Spatchcock and Wurzel here in the UK. Uh, they're all canjos of various shapes and sizes. I'm really pleased with them and I thought you might be interested to see them. Uh, you either get this stuff or you don't. I mean, I'm a professional guitarist. I've taught the guitar all my working life. You know, I, I own some pretty nice uh, Gibson acoustics and Martin acoustics. I've got a Fender Strat, had Gibson electric guitars, you name it, I've had it. Um, but a few years ago, I started getting into cigar box guitars and all kinds of weird things. And uh, just recently, I've been getting into the little one string guitars. I discovered uh, Spatchcock and Wurzel on the, uh, on the web. And uh, I, as I say, I, I ordered three of their instruments. So I'm just going to go through them with you and you'll see what's, uh, what's what. First of all, we've got this uh, Golden Virginia uh, guitar. It's a one stringer. Um, it's got a dulcimer neck. So apart from one note, this one, okay, all the notes are in the major scale of whatever uh, key that you tune the string to. So if you tune the string to an open G, then your major scale will be G major. Uh, and you can tune it to anything uh, that the string will, will cope with. Obviously, if you, if you tune it too high, the string will break. If you tune it too low, it's going to flap about. You're not going to get you know, too much of a good tone. So, you know, it's probably got a range of about a fifth, all in all. Um, I mean, it's simplicity itself, this. You've got a one-piece neck uh, made of, I'm guessing, a hardwood. I'm not sure. It looks a bit like oak. I'm not an expert on wood, so um, I can't tell you for sure. It's scalloped out here, you can see that, so that you've got room to strum. The body is a Golden Virginia tobacco tin. I bought this one because my dad, bless him, used to smoke Golden Virginia tobacco. He used to use these tins. And it's even got the, the little groove here and it says on, on the side of the tin, insert coin and twist to open the lid. And there's a little slot for that. Okay, I've tuned this to a C now. So the open string is C, first fret is D, second fret is E, and then F, and then G, A. Then we have B flat, and then B, and then C, and it goes on repeating. Uh, that B flat there is handy if you want to play like a C7 kind of run, because if you know your chords, uh, you need a B flat in a C7 chord, but the true seventh of the scale of C, of course, is B. So that note there is kind of the odd man out, uh, but it is useful to have. Um, it's got a classical guitar type of machine head. Hope you can see it there, which is geared, which is nice and strong, uh, perfect for the job. The body, like I said, is a tobacco tin. Yes, to show you inside there. Hope you can see this. The bridge is just the hole in the back of the tin where the string passes through on its way to the tailpiece. Um, so there's no actual bridge as such. And what's a nice touch is these sharp edges have got kind of protectors on them so that uh, you don't cut yourself. You put the lid back on. It's great, isn't it? Um, you also get um, a plectrum, which is nice. Nice touch. And you get a little uh, quick guide to playing I love it, it says the anti-landfill luthiers, that's how they describe themselves. So everything is sort of upcycled, recycled, and that's a, you know, it's a good ethos, isn't it, I think, in these, these days. Um, and you get a guide to playing if you don't know how to play, and some little tunes um, using a simple number code. Um, I said in another video that I think these are great instruments for children. Um, I'm a guitar teacher in schools and I'm certainly going to be using them in schools. I think they're a fantastic way to introduce a young child to playing guitar. If you look at my guide uh, for teachers video, which is quite a long video, uh, elsewhere on my channel, um, then you'll see I go into it in real depth. But um, suffice to say, they're great little instruments for adults and children alike. All the guitars come with this lanyard uh, type of guitar strap, which is perfect for this because it's only very, very lightweight. And they've got these uh, spring-loaded cord locks so you can very quickly change the length of the strap, of the lanyard if you like. And nice touch, you've got strap locks at the uh, headstock. 
aimed at the tail. And it's just nice little touches. I really like that. And as I say, the neck is uh, just screwed with a simple nut and bolt into the tin. So the all important thing is, what does it sound like? <laughs> it sounds great. Um, it's not loud, obviously. It's only a tiny little tin. That's your, that's your sound box. That's your resonator, if you like. Um, but it's got a nice sort of banjo-y sort of tone. Brilliant for sort of noodling about late at night and so you don't annoy the neighbours, don't annoy your, your family. Um, so I'll play you a tune on it. Although there's no way of adjusting the intonation, I have to say, it is actually spot on. Uh, if you don't know what I mean by the intonation, uh, you have to make sure that the distance from the inside of the nut here to the octave on this type of guitar, the octave is the eighth fret, is the same as the distance from the middle of that eighth fret down to the bridge, which in this case is the hole in the back of the tin. And it's been set perfectly, so that's great. So the intonation, uh, is right, in other words, the notes work accurately all the way up. So it's a good job, isn't it? Uh, the nut, by the way, is actually not, not a nut per se, it's actually a, a large fret. I'll show you that with a, a groove cut in it so it can take different sizes of strings. This is, you know, a fairly light, plain string. I'm guessing it's probably about an 11 or something. But uh, really pleased with this, and I've, um, I've been noodling around this for the last couple of days and really enjoying it. So it's brilliant fun. Uh, you can strum it like you would strum several strings, but instead of doing that, of course, you're just strumming one string. And uh, really good fun to play. So that's my Golden Virginia guitar, and I'm gonna show you another one now. So what we have here is a, a beautiful Art Deco type of um, chocolate tin. And um, this is a little bit more involved, this one. It's another one stringer, um, slightly darker wood. Again, it's probably a piece of oak, I think. Uh, probably reclaimed from a doorpost or something. Does it matter? That's great. I think it's brilliant that these things get used. It's got this rather lovely kind of, I call it a spoon headstock. It's really, really nice that, isn't it? With the classical guitar tuner. I really like that. It's absolutely beautiful behind. Look at that there. The shape of that is superb. Very, very comfortable to hold. It's a real nice piece of work. You can see it's got this wooden surround to mask any uh, nasty bits where the, the tin was cut. It's a good touch, isn't it? And this one has got a proper bridge, lovely fancy wooden tail piece, uh, a floating bridge, okay, which has got a part of a bolt that the string passes over, and you can move that up and down uh, to make sure your intonation's uh, spot on. This one's electric, it's got piezo pickup inside, so there's the jack socket on the bottom, and a quality touch is that it has on top a, um, a little tone and volume system. And I'll show you that in a moment electrically, I'll plug it through my little lamp. Usual thing with the lanyard and the two um, strap buttons, top and bottom. But um, this is quite a bit heavier, this one. Not, I mean, not heavy as such, but heavier, obviously, than the Golden Virginia. This one's got a... Um, a thicker string, thicker gauge, looks to me something like a D string. It's actually tuned to C at the moment. Um, now, obviously you can see it's a longer scale. This one is a 25 inch scale. So it's 25 inches from the nut 
down to where the string passes over the, um, the bridge. So a fairly long scale, which is going to take a little bit of getting used to for me, because it obviously means that the first few frets are quite, quite a stretch, even for my long fingers, but I'll get used to that in time. Um, it's got a lovely low action, very easy to press the strings down. And like I said in my other video, it's, you know, that's going to be brilliant for children. You know, they're not going to struggle to press these strings down. So a nice tone, much darker. Obviously with the tin, there is a, a bit of a tendency to push into the tin, which flexes, but you know, that's, that's just, you know, that's not a fault, obviously, that's just part of the fact you're using a tin. Um, but it sounds nice. And you can do a nice wah-wah effect there. So by pushing the tin lid in and out. So added extra there. Let's plug it in, shall we? I'm using a Roland Cube Street EX uh, amp here, which is you know quite a high quality uh, Busker's amp. It runs off eight AAs, but it's a really nice, clean sounding amp. I'm just using the acoustic guitar patch on it with a bit of reverb. I mean, obviously, you know, don't expect Fender Stratocaster. This is a piezo pickup, so it's essentially a microphone shoved up against probably the lid inside of this. Um, but it's a way of making it louder and it sounds pretty nice. I'll just play the same tune, but using the amplification. That's got a pretty nice sound, isn't it? You don't get a lot of clearance on this particular model for strumming. It's not the nice scallop bit, so you know you will make contact with the um, the lid of the chocolate tin. But it's, it's all you know. You just have to get used to these things. And all these guitars have got their own little idiosyncrasies, which is which is great. That's what makes this kind of world brilliant. I think the fact that every single instrument is unique in some way. Uh, so that is that one, and uh, I'm really, really pleased with it. It's completely different to the Gold and Virginia one, and it's going to do a different job for me. And apart from anything else, these things are lovely to look at, and they're lovely to, lovely to own. Apart from playing, they actual, you know, they are works of art in their own way. So let's move on to guitar number three now. Um, you might say I've saved the best to last because this is what I call the Vader Caster. It's a lovely Darth Vader Star Wars lunchbox, uh, complete with catch. And this one is a two stringer. And actually I'm really grateful to uh, Spatchcock and Wurzel for turning me on to two stringers. I actually turned, when I heard that they, they did two stringers, that really intrigued me. And I turned one of my other cigar box guitars temporarily into a two stringer. And you can see a couple of videos I've done on that. And I made a few discoveries. Um, they come from the factory tuned uh, in an octave, so uh, I think it's octave D they send them out, so a low D and a high D. I, I tune mine differently, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, so basically, we've got another, it's another tin, they're all made of tin, okay? Um, it's got one piece neck, again, obviously two pegs, one for each string. So the usual thing, nice big fret for the nut there. Uh, floating bridge, a little bit of a bolt on top of a piece of wood so you can alter the, um, the intonation, get the, the octave fret bang in. Lovely fancy tailpiece. What I like about this one, so I want to show you this, is the way that it's been uh, cut to take the grooves of the tin, the lid of the tin, the base of the tin. That's a nice little touch, isn't that? Nice picture of Darth on the bottom with his uh, lightsaber. As I say, you know, I, I work in school and I know the kids are going to go crazy when they see this, they're going to absolutely love this. And because that's what it's all about with children is, you know, capturing their imagination. You know, I know if I went in with some, you know, sort of fairly dreary three-quarter size guitar, 
you know, they would go, oh yeah, great, it's a guitar. They see this, they're going to want to own one, they're going to want to play one. And that's what it's all about, particularly these days I find with children. I've been teaching kids for over 40 years and I've watched them change over the years in, in the sense that, you know, 40 years ago there wasn't the internet, there wasn't computers, you know, I'm going to sound like a right old bore here, aren't I? But you know what I'm saying here. These days you've really got to struggle to... Uh, capture their imagination. I'm, I'm sure these things will. That's why I'm really excited about them. So this one is a, another long scale one, 25 inch from uh, nut to bridge. So again, fairly long, fairly wide down here. But I mean, most children will play with one finger. So I mean, the stretch won't worry them. I mean, obviously I, I try and play properly being a professional. You know, I try and use one finger per fret, but you know, to, it's actually fine just to bring one finger up and down the, the uh, the strings, you don't have to use the fingers properly unless you really, really want to. A little bit more clearance on this one for playing, a little bit more of a gap. Now I tune mine in a little bit of a strange way. Um, I've tuned the lower string to a C and the upper string to a, a B flat. And that means it gives you kind of a C seventh tuning. And I've, I've done a, an in-depth tutorial on the different cigar box um, playing this blues. I'll play it for you now on this uh, Vader caster. That's got a really nice acoustic tone. Um, we'll plug it in, see what it sounds like plugged in. So no volume control, so you know, you've got to be careful when you, when you turn your amp and make sure it's not set too high. These piezo pickups do have a tendency to, uh, to feedback if they're too loud, but it might be a problem with me, I might be playing that loud. So how would you describe the tone? Well, um, obviously it's going to be different for you listening to it on your speakers at home. Um, I'd say it's kind of a, a banjo-y kind of sound. I mean, to be honest, it hasn't got the warmth and the volume of a cigar box, uh, one of these things. Obviously wood is going to sound warmer and louder. But having said that, it's got a charm all of its own. The, the tin definitely gives it a very unique sound and it's, it's, it's going to be great for me to have both wooden uh, boxes and uh, tins as well um, and I, I like the sound of both of them. I also have to say uh, the company Spatchcock and Wurzel, uh, they're really nice to deal with, very very friendly, very helpful. Uh, I've had you know, loads of uh, emails from them and uh, they've been you know, brilliant right the way through the process of buying these instruments. I um, also have to say I'm not sponsored by them in any way. Um, I buy lots of musical instruments and do lots of reviews and you know, I always believe in you know, giving credit where credit's due and if I buy something and I'm pleased with it, um, I'm only too happy to do a, a little review. Uh, you'll be able to see them at Glastonbury this year, it's 2016, uh, late May, the time of doing this video, so Glastonbury's coming up and you'll be able to see them there, so check them out. Um, and I'll be interested to see any videos that, uh, that you do. Um, if you go on the net, you can find some people at previous Glastonbury's noodling about on their instruments, and it's, and it's really good fun to see. So anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Three uh, canjos, as they're called, made by Spatchcock and Wurzel. Um, canjo, of course, comes from banjo and can. In America, it's a very big thing in America. Over there, of course, the, the body or resonator is actually a tin can. I'm not sure, A, how comfortable that would be to play, and B, how long that would last before it got crushed. So probably um, 
a lunch box or a, a cake tin or a biscuit tin is, is probably a better bet. There we are. Uh, any questions you may have, of course, please do get in touch and I hope you enjoy this video.